The Legend of the RMS Titanic, Part 6. April 10th, 1912, Wednesday. The day is finally arrived. White Star Line's newest superliner, RMS Titanic, second to the Olympic class liners, is ready for her maiden voyage. At Southampton Docks, she is preparing to set sail on her maiden voyage. After this, she'll head, she'll head on to, to Sherbrooke, France, and then to Queenstown, Ireland, now named Cove, before now m sailing all the way to New York. Captain Smith is can't, can't wait to begin the main voyage of his new uh, of his newest command and his last command, as he's uh, he is said to be retiring right after Titanic's main voyage. Only five days l earlier, however, the SS Californian, a Leyland Line steamer, set sailed from uh, London all the way uh, and is now on the way to Massachusetts. However, she will be part of the Titanic story in one very controversial way. The second and third class boat trains from Waterloo were the first to arrive at the, uh, at the dock, and by 8 o'clock, uh, many of the passengers were already boarding Titanic at this time. Scarcely an, a, a half an hour before, the, before, long, uh, be, before sailing, the first class train arrived, uh, which was supposed to be the first train to arrive, but in fact was the last train to arrive at, the, at Titanic's uh, first, uh, for, first stop. Southampton. It can all, it's almost hard to imagine the thrillment of many uh, first-class children with their rich families boarding Titanic for the very first time. A new superliner. Everything was all good, was all gorgeous and new. One survivor will later say. However, as they would come to find out, four to, uh, five days later, Titanic would be at the bottom of the North Atlantic Ocean. On Titanic's bridge, Captain Edward John Smith sees every point of command uh, during the uh, during the boarding of Titanic. Fifth Officer Lowe, f uh, First Officer Murdoch, the only Scottish officer on board Titanic, and uh, and Chief Officer Wild are on, uh, are on the bridge. Lowe is in charge of giving orders to, via telephone to many points of the ships during uh, uh, various points of the ship during her uh, during uh, the first sailing from Southampton. L Light Toller, Moody, Boxall, uh, uh, Boxall, and Pittman would be in charge of the set of uh, helping passengers to the gangways. Many passengers were, see were seen as for sickness, uh, mostly with third class passengers in this, or if they were, or by third class. If third class, uh, you would be at the very bottom of the ship. Tita on Titanic, second class would be various points in the ship actually, while ta while first class had a majority of the state of the glorious staterooms on board Titanic. Now, thanks to a coal strike that had happened during the time of Titanic's construction, coal had to be transferred from other ships of the White Star Line to Titanic, even Titanic's own sister, sister ship, RMS Olympic. RMS Olympic will play a key role in the events. The in the key role in the events fall uh, in the Titanic disaster. Finally, by noon, April 10th, 1912, Titanic is ready to depart on her main voyage. On board is J. Bruce Ismay, the, the chairman of the White Star Line, the company that owned Titanic. He will be a controversial character in the events leading up, eh, during and after the Titanic disaster. Titanic gives three blasts of her whistle. <laughs> Titanic's ropes begin to slip away from the harbor, her engines are started up.
However, as Titanic begins to head down the river, go going faster and faster, disaster strikes. A few minutes after depart uh, after starting her departure, Titanic passed two ships: the RMS Oceanic, built in 1899. And the SS City of New York, built in 1888. The reason Oceanic and, uh, and City of New York are more together is because that, due to the coal strike, coal had to be transferred from both ships onto Titanic. Then, disaster strikes. Suddenly, heard by those closer to City of New York, there's a snapping noise. Suddenly, City of New York begins to fl uh, begins to uh, to drift out of control. Her mooring lines have broke loose. She is now uh, she is now drifting directly into the path of RMS Titanic. Not even out of her uh, departure yet, and Titanic is now facing a dire situation. Will she collide with SS City of New York? It will later be learned that uh, that New York's incident was caused by the Titanic's massive wake of wa uh, massive displacement of water that made uh, that made Oceanic and City of New York rose and t and uh, the much smaller uh, City of New York had her uh, more lines broke loose. Now Titanic was nearly dragging New uh, City of New York to directly towards herself. Will the collision with a RMS Olympic in 1911 be repeated again? George Boyer, the pilot on board Titanic at this time, takes evasive action. He orders stop engines and then full speed astern, but a collision seems inevitable. However, Captain Gale of the tugboat Vulcan manages to swing, around, uh, swing behind New York's stern and gets a wa uh, water rope on her port quarter to slow her drift. Slowly, City of New York begins to drift away from Titanic. The passengers are shocked at what they see. This photo was taken by Father Brown, who was a passenger on board RMS Titanic. Collision is avoided by a meter or so, and New York drifts safely away from RMS Titanic. Titanic is forced to wait an hour while New York is safely is safely uh, tugged, towed back to safety, and more extra lines are added to SS Oceanic, making sure that she won't fall into the near disaster New York and uh, Titanic just had. Finally, Titanic sets sail on her main voyage. This will be a bad tidings in the or uh, in the eyes of the passengers and crew aboard Titanic. But I can't help just wondering this uh, similarity to the uh, to the story in the fictional story of the sinking of the uh, the wreck of the SS Titan, the fictional counterpart of the RMS Titanic, in which Titan struck a sailing ship and sank her, while she only received she herself only received minor damage. This uh, this unfortunately did not happen in the case of Titanic, and New York was saved. Titanic, however, was only just beginning. At 6.35 p.m., several hours after the near incident with New York, Titanic arrives at Cherbourg, France, her first stop. However, Titanic is too big to enter the harbor herself, so two ships, called Tenders, will be, be, were specifically built to transfer uh, passengers for, to and from Titanic and her sister ships Olympic and the future Gigantic. There were two Tenders in Cherbourg, Normatic, and her running mate, SS Traffic. Those who board on board, uh, on board Titanic would be the most famous passengers that would be on board Titanic, including one such lady. Among the 274 passengers who boarded Titanic at Cherbourg was Margaret Brown. Later was James J. Brown, Margaret Brown to be exact, and she was known as her friends as Molly. After the Titanic disaster, she would be known as the unsinkable Molly Br Brown. Another person boarding Titanic at Cherbourg who would become very famous was John Jacob Astor. Born in 1964, he was a he was a former lieutenant and colonel of the Spanish of the American Spanish War. He would be the richest man on Titanic. He was traveling with his 18-year-old wife, Madeline Force, Madeline Force, who at this point was pregnant 
wanting the child to be born in the United States, they decided to rush back to New uh, to America and on the Titanic. Well, by, by embarking on her at Cherbourg. So Cosmo Duff Gordon and his, and his wife Lucille are also on board Titanic. Another passenger on board Titanic is Benjamin Guggenheim. Archbold Gracie is also a pan passenger on board RMS Titanic. The entire change of passengers to, from Normatic and traffic to Titanic took only about 90 minutes. 24 passengers disembarked Titanic as they were only on the share board crossing only a, a passage. Then Titanic set sails for, sh uh, for Queenstown, Ireland. For Guggenheim, Astor, and many others, this will be the last time they will see they will see land. 11:30 a.m., April 11th, Titanic arrives at Cork Harbor at Queenstown. Again, she is too big to enter the harbor, and is ordered to stop. Two tenders, Ireland and America, will transfer passengers from ti from ti uh, from the dock onto Titanic and back again. One passenger that disembarked Titanic was Francis Brown, a reverend and Irish priest. He was the one who had taken millions of photos from, ti from Titanic. He was also the one who captured the photo of New York's and Titanic's near-fatal collision. Even though he only planned to go only to Queenstown, a pa fellow passenger decided to give Brown a ticket for the entire cross to New York. Brown asked, his, uh, Brown asked his chief of server if this was necessary, as he really wanted to go. However, uh, however, he received a stern re response. The response was, get off that ship. A bit surprised, Brown leaves Titanic. His photos will become the only of ever of Titanic's interior. 1.30 p.m., Titanic departs Queenstown. This is the last known photo of RMS Titanic. Finally out of the open sea, Captain Smith orders Titanic to reach full speed. Sadly, there were uh, apparently there were only 200-208 uh, uh, people aboard Titanic, while White Star wanted all on board, as in 3,327. However, this would become quite fortunate in the events the, in the Titanic disaster. April 11th will be also the same day that RMS Carpathia set sail from New York City. Now, I guess you're wondering what does, uh, what does Carpathia have in the point of the Titanic story? She has a big role in the story. For the next three days, Titanic set sails at top speed, sailing over the, sailing over the North Atlantic Ocean. She makes ex excellent pro er, progress and many of the passengers enjoy themselves, eating dinner, lunch with other passengers, or really just playing games in the smoking rooms, lounges, er, and reading rooms, especially the second class library. April 14th, 1912. It is Titanic's final day. The 14th marked a very special day in the eyes of Captain Smith because he received some great news. Now, unbeknownst to the passengers, Titanic had set sail on fire. When Titanic set sail from Southampton, even from Belfast, a, a small fire was founded in, the, in, the, in one of the coal bunkers, smoldering. For the first day of the main voyage, Captain Smith did not let any of the passengers know about what, what was going on. And he uh, and he had a he had an order to have coal be, more extra coal to be shoved into boiler rooms so uh, so the fire wouldn't spread. On the 14th, he had realized that ti uh, that Titanic's coal fire had stopped. Many people, however, this meant that co Titanic's coal resumption had been uh, drastically reduced, and due to to the coal strike, it may have been the seam that Titan uh, that Captain Smith wanted to uh, wanted Titanic to uh, reach New York before lo uh, losing coal. Uh, like in 1873, when the uh, if the sinking of the RMS Atlantic, there is no chance for that to ever happen again. Many people think that the fire had nothing to do with the sinking, but it did, and all evidence points to this photo. That morning, Archibald Gr Gracie had taken a swim in the swimming pool. 
as he would later say, it was the, it was NASA having a cool, fresh temperature. He would have a squash court with a with a squash court man, uh, squash court uh, professional the next day. This would never happen, of course. Apparently, there was supposed to be a life bill drill to be carried out that day. However, it was canceled by Captain Smith, who literally uh, held a church service in the first-class dining saloon. This would be a big mistake. As day turns to night, Titanic sees daylight for the very last time. We are on to the night of the sinking. From April 11, Titanic had received ice warnings from various ships. The Corona, the Misaba, the Baltic, the Athena, the Nordam, all these ships relayed uh, uh, iceberg messages to Titanic. Which, however, one of them was ca carried up to the bridge, which was the Corona's message. It is unknown what actually happened to the other messages. However, uh, however, Harold Bride did say that he gave the Misaba message to a person, to a person on board, uh, to an officer on board Titanic. It is unknown who it was, or even the message was ever relayed. The same day, J. Bruce Ismay had a conversation with, with, uh, with Captain Smith, saying that we will beat the Olympic and get into New York on Tuesday. He wanted Titan to be faster than, Olymp uh, than Olympic. He wanted to prove the, to Cunard that White Star ships were superior. It is unknown if Captain Smith actually believed in this. The coal fire may have been a, uh, may have been a react to this. However, J. Bruce Ismay will be a controversial figure, figure in the inquiries of the Titanic disaster. 11 p.m. Titanic receives one final ice warning. It is from the SS Californian. Say, old man, we are stopped and surrounded by ice. Less than two miles away from Titanic, to, uh, uh, our SS California had stopped because she was, uh, she was surrounded by ice, or had entered in a very thick ice, pa uh, ice pack. She was forced to stop for the night. Captain Stanley Lord would later order, ship, would later order his uh, uh, chief wireless operator to, to give all uh, sounds of communication uh, uh, of the ice warning to various ships. The closest was Titanic. The spark from a Californian is so loud it nearly ble it, it nearly de uh, deafens uh, Jack Phillips, the may uh, the wireless operator at the time of Titan uh, at the time of this message. Harold Bry was asleep at this moment during his as his shift was uh, shift as his shift was off. Jack Phillips is very angry at the Californian and gives back a very stern reply. Shut up, shut up, your bl you bloody idiot! I am busy. I am working Cape Wraith. Surprised by Titanic's surprise, uh, uh, reply, California's wireless operator turns in for the night, while the wireless was supposed to kept on 24-7. Titanic has lost her last chance of iceberg warning. One, uh, the one uh, reporter earlier reported that 58 miles away from Titanic, she is heading straight into a field of ice. Jack Thayer, a passenger on board Titanic, will later say, I was up on the boat deck watching the uh, watching the moon. While all of a sudden, while all of a sudden, the the wind started to get much colder and the air grew even more colder. I decided to turn in for the night. Uh, however, I decided to go up uh, on deck one last time to see the to see the beautiful stars. I realized there was no moon in the sky, and there was the sea was flat calm. Jack Thayer would later meet Milton Lung in the uh, in one of the lounges of Titanic. Up on Titanic's bridge, Captain Smith and, uh, and Second Officer Charles Lightoller talked about the weather conditions that night. Lightoller would later say, "If you ask me, uh, we we and me and the captain talked about the uh, uh, the the conditions that night. It was very calm, and there was no moon. And we talked about the, uh, it being a flat calm. You couldn't see waves breaking over ice, and that the moon uh, the moon didn't shone, meaning that it was very hard to see an iceberg." This meant that without the moon, the lookouts couldn't see the iceberg, and Titanic was standing full speed into into an ice flow of them. Had the lookouts used binoculars, they could have seen the iceberg. Why didn't they use binoculars? Well, watch part 5, and you'll find out. On board Carpathia, Captain Russian has already turned in for the night. However, he doesn't know that he's just about to be a witness to one of the greatest rescues in maritime history. Stanley Lord aboard Californian also turns in for the night. 
He doesn't know he's gonna be part of one of the most controversial things in the Titanic story. Captain Smith also turns in for the night. He doesn't know that he's just about to go to sleep for the very last time. Titanic is sailing at 24, uh, 24 knots, her top speed, into a blind state of destruction ahead of her. All 2,208 passengers aboard Titanic do not know that Titanic will be lost, and 15, 15 souls will be dead. But that's a story for another day.